Hey students, it's me, Mr. Fitz. Um, I just wanted to take us through a quick video on how we simplify radicals um, and also go through some delta math questions. So here we go. Uh, let's take a look at this. So, haha, uh -huh, yeah, Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, totally radical. Um, good movie, by the way. So this is what I really want to talk about. So when we're th simplifying radicals, one thing you should definitely like think about is um, your multiplication table. And in particular, this diagonal here. These are known as square numbers. These are the numbers that are going to really help us when we're thinking about simplifying radicals. So um, this is something you should definitely memorize. If you don't have one, uh, I will save one down um, in our shared in Google Classroom so you can have it. Uh, and usually they're in like the back of composition notebooks. So very important to know. Know that diagonal. The other thing we definitely need to know, and is if you want to, you can take notes on this in either your notebook or if you need some guided notes, you can look in classroom. Um, the divis divisibility rules. So the rule of two. What is the rule of two? If the number is even, um, then it's divisible by two. So meaning the last digit is zero, two, four, six, or eight. So if it's an even number, it's divisible by two. What else? Rule of three. So the rule of three is if the sum of the digits is divisible by three. So what's an example of that? Say um, 27. Two plus seven is nine. Nine is divisible by three. So 27 is divisible by three. Um, same goes for like 372, right? 372 is three plus seven is 10, plus two is 12. 12 is divisible by three. If you can't remember if 12 is divisible by 3, just do it again. 1 plus 2 is 3. So that's divisible by 3. So those are some examples. The rule of 4. This is a cool rule. Um, if the last two digits are divisible by 4. And the reason for that is 100 is divisible by 4. And any 100s, so 800, 900, 1,000, anything number, any even number, even 100, is divisible by 4. So for example, 916. 16 is divisible by 4, so 916 is as well. 932 also. Rule of 5, if the last digit is 5 or 0, 0 or 5, then it's divisible by 5. Rule of 6, if the number is divisible by 2 and 3, so meaning if it passes the rule of 2, if it's even, and if the sum of the div digits is divisible by 3. Um, I skipped seven because it's a, kind of a weird rule. I believe it's if you take the last digit and subtract it from the other digits, and if that's divisible by seven, I don't know, anyway. Um, and then the rule of eight is like the rule of four, only if it's the last three digits, if that's divisible by eight. So like 7,808, 7, like that would be divisible by eight. Um, Rule of nine, if the sum of the digits is divisible by nine. So really useful. And so if we think about that, back to the multiplication table here. So if we look at anything that's divisible by nine, so anything that's going down this nine column here, so notice 117, right? One plus one plus seven, that's nine. Ah, cool. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5, that's 9. So all these numbers are divisible by 9. Okay, those are our divisibility rules. So, now let's talk about simplifying radicals. So, to simplify a radical, what do we need to do? Well, there's a couple of ways we can think about it. And so this is a, an example of a delta math question. So, the first way that I think about is if we actually use prime factorization. So what are the prime factors of 72? So you could create a little factor tree here, and this gives us our prime factors of 2, 2, 2, 3, and 3. So we can think about like 72 is actually 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, right? This is just all prime factorization. So some of you may are familiar with prime factor trees, some are not. It's okay. Um, either way, I just wanted to show you that. So 
Now, 2 times 2 times 2, well, these pairs that I see underneath here, so 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 3 is 9. So I can actually rewrite radical 72 as radical 4 times radical 9 times radical 2. So whenever we think about radicals, we can split that out into its factors, and you just keep everything underneath the radical. But what is the square root of 4? That's 2. What is the square root of 9? That's 3. Well, we can rewrite that as 2 times 3, which is 6. So the answer is just 6 radical 2. That's in simplest radical form. Now, let's look at one more way that you can think about doing this. There's our answer. So the other way I like to think about this is just creating a table of all of the factors of 72. So for example, 72 is divisible by 2. It's even, right? So 2 times 36 is 72. It's also divisible by 3, right? 7 plus 2 is 9, so 24 times 3 is 72. It divis it's divisible by 4, 13 times 4. It's divisible by 6. It's even and divisible by 3. So it's 12 times 6 is 72, and also 9 times 8. So this is another reason why it's good to know your multiplication table. So once you've done this, what you do is you look in this table for square numbers. So look for any of these numbers along the diagonal in this table. So where are there some square numbers? 9 and 36. But what I really want is the largest square number. So what is the largest square number here? 36. So that's what I'm going to try right here. I'm just going to write in square root of 36 and the square root of 2. Well, what is the square root of 36? It's 6. So your answer is 6 radical 2. You could have put in 9 and 8. Then what you would have ended up with, well, what's the square root of 9? It's 3. So you'd end up with 3 radical 8. But that's not in simplest radical form, right? Because the square root of 8 can also be simplified because 8 equals 4 times 2. So that would be 2 radical 2. So you would end up with the 3 times 2 radical 2, which is 6 radical 2. All right, so there we go. Um, I'm going to pause for one second and bring up a delta math question so we can look at that too. So here we go. Here's an example of a delta math question. So what I usually do is I actually start just taking this number radical 176 and creating that table. But you can just go ahead and create that table but simply by just dividing by square numbers and then seeing like which one is the largest. So for example here, 176. And I would divide that by 4. That's, you know, the first square number. Does that work? Oh, that does work. All right, cool. Well, 176, what's the next square number? Um, 9, right? 3 times 3. That doesn't work. Okay, 176 divisible by what's uh, 4 times 4? 16. Oh, that works. And actually... 11 is prime, so I can't do anything else. So I know 176 is 16 times 11. Well, that's what I'm going to try in here. I'm just going to try 16 and 11. So what is radical 16? That's 4. Submit my answer. Yes. And the cool thing is Delta Math shows you um, different ways you can do this. So it shows you the most efficient path, the fastest path, and the least efficient. So I could have done radical 4. Um, this would have been 2 times 44, and then I could have done it that way. So both are correct. One is a little faster than the other. One's a little more efficient. So just wanted to show you that. There are other Delta Math questions as well that are not guided. You just kind of have to plug in the answer yourself. So thanks for watching. Um, hope this helps, and please, please, please let me know if you have any, any questions.